pleasure to invite Mr. Douglas Wu, President of the Singapore Manufacturing Federation, to give his welcome address. Mr. Fu, please. Thanks, Emily. His Excellency, Dr. Suriwa, Dr. Suriya Chindawong, Ambassador Designate of Thailand to Singapore, Distinguished Speaker, Mr. Chok Di Kiao Seng, Deputy Secretary General of the Board of Investment of Thailand, Distinguished Speaker, Mr. Jamrat Sawang Samut, Director General of the Federation of Thai Industries, FTI, Distinguished Speaker, Mr. Ang Sutong Was Susan, Deputy Director, Investment and International Affairs Group of Eastern Economic Corridor of Thailand, Distinguished Speaker, Mr. Alexandro Perota, Chief Executive Officer of Interplex Holdings Private Limited and Council Member of SMF, Distinguished Speakers, Ms. Nina Yang, CEO of SJ City Global. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon. On behalf of the Singapore Manufacturing Federation, SMF, I would like to thank the Ambassador Designate of Thailand to Singapore, His Excellency, Ms. Dr. Surya Chindawong, for taking the time to grace this live webinar as our guest of honor. Today's webinar is organized by the Singapore Manufacturing Federation, SMF, in partnership with the Royal Thai Embassy in Singapore, and is supported by the Board of Investment of Thailand, the Eastern Economic Corridor of Thailand, and SMF's close counterpart, namely the Federation of Thai Industries, FTI. This webinar on Thailand has come at an opportune time. Taking an optimistic view of things, we believe there are always opportunities even in times of crisis. Even though we are unable to meet face-to-face -face due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this webinar is by itself a manifestation of the good relations that Singapore and Thailand have built up over the years. It also demonstrates the ability of SMF and all our partnering organizations in Singapore and Thailand to adapt to the situation and to continue to look for ways to grow our businesses and contribute to the growth of our economies. In this regard, I'm confident that today's webinar will give companies a better knowledge of the manufacturing climate in the land of smiles and find opportunities for sustained growth. Thailand is one of the first countries to establish diplomatic relations with Singapore shortly after we gained independence in 1965. Since then, both countries have enjoyed close bilateral ties through engagements in the Singapore Thailand Enhanced Partnership, STEP, which was launched in 1997 to provide the framework for long term strategic partnership in economic cooperation, defense relations and people-to-people -people cooperation. This partnership further encouraged bilateral operations such as Leaders Retreat, Civil Service Exchange Program, CSEP, Singapore-Thailand Enhanced Economic Relationship, STER, and International Security Cooperation. Singapore is one of Thailand's largest source of investment. In 2017, Singapore invested 4.3 billion US dollars into Thailand, making us the third top investor behind Japan and China. Singapore's inbound investment into Thailand includes companies founded in the city state as well as many international firms. This is a validation of how Thailand has positioned itself as a choice of it for investors and reflects Singapore's confidence in Thailand. To further strengthen our cooperation, and to help our companies enter into our respective markets with ease. Our two countries have signed a range of free trade agreements, FTAs, as member states of ASEAN, and with other partnering countries in multilateral country FTAs. One FTA that both countries are supporting is the ASEAN Free Trade Area, or the AFTA. The AFTA, together with ASEAN Trade in Goods Agreement, ATIGA, ATIGA, saw both nations eliminating their intra-ASEAN import duties on almost 100% of their tariff lines. The AFTA also provides protection for investors and investments in both markets. Business enterprises of our two countries will have greater opportunities to pull their respective 
capabilities and partner together to bid for government projects, leveraging on each other's strengths. Another FTA that is slated to be signed under this year is the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RCEP. This FTA, which involves all 10 countries in the ASEAN and five of their trading partners, has the potential to bring significant opportunities for participating countries, and it is set to encompass about 45% of the world's population, or about 3.4 billion, and a third of the global domestic product GDP of about US dollars 20 million, 20 trillion, sorry. Furthermore, the RCEP will lower trade barriers and improve market access for goods and services, enhance transparency in trade and investment, as well as facilitate the greater inclusion of ASEAN's small and medium enterprise SMEs to global and regional supply chains. It is therefore encouraging for our manufacturers to collaborate with Thai businesses and work together to expand businesses across new frontiers. In this regard, as the voice of the Singapore manufacturing community since 1932, one of SMF's aim is to encourage our local enterprises to look beyond the Singapore market and seek new growth opportunities overseas. To facilitate this, the SMF signed many Memorandum of Understanding, MOUs, with various overseas organizations and counterparts. One such MOU that SMF signed was with the Federation of Thai Industries, FTI, in 2015. This FTI SMF MOU is particularly significant as the MOU was signed in the presence of the Thailand Prime Minister General Priyut Chan, Chan O Cha and Singapore Prime Minister Lee Hsien Long. The MOU aims to strengthen business relations and promote economic cooperation between enterprises in both nations. And to achieve these goals, both SMF and the FTI agreed to collaborate and partner together to organize and render assistance to each other in trade, investment, and business events. Both organizations also agreed to encourage their respective members to form strategic alliance to go to third country for business and investment. I'm indeed delighted to note that Mr. Jamrud Sawa Samot, Director General of FTI, will be representing FTI to share views later on in this webinar. Today's webinar is one of the numerous business events and collaboration to promote business relations between our two countries. While it is not possible to hold a business mission in the current situation, and with many businesses focusing on operating in an unfamiliar and uncertain global economy, we at SMF strongly believe that this is a good time for businesses to relook business models, upgrade capabilities, and look to strengthen business resilience capabilities. Similarly, the same can also apply to business relationships. It is therefore also an opportune time for Singapore and Thailand to relook at how we collaborate with each other, continue to strengthen our relationship with resilience capabilities, and therefore emerge with a stronger partnership than ever before. In this regard, the SMF looks towards the support of the FTI, as well as partners in Thailand and Singapore to pull resources together to execute plans to facilitate enterprises in our two countries to work together for mutual benefit. Thailand's strategic location in the heart of ASEAN, connected with the fast-growing CLMV, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam countries, make it an ideal location for business and businesses investors. In a recent survey done by the SMF, some 31% of respondents say that Thailand is one of the countries they are looking to further explore expanding business relations with. In the SBS National Business Survey 2019-2020, 40% of respondents indicated that they have a presence in Thailand. One of the main lessons arising out of the COVID-19 pandemic is the importance of digital connectivity. Secure digital infrastructures are now more than ever crucial to assist economies recover and to become more resilient against the effects of future global pandemics. In this regard, it is noteworthy that Thailand has had the foresight to invest in projects to strengthen the country's ICT infrastructure. According to the Board of Investment website, 
the government has worked on providing free Wi-Fi hotspots in almost 25,000 villages across the country, creating a national broadband network and connecting to almost 75,000 villages as well as all schools and local hospitals. Furthermore, Thailand has adopted a new economic model called Thailand 4.0, which will focus on five new targeted industries, automation and robotics, aviation and logistics, biofuels and biochemical, digital and medical hub. I'm sure that Mr. Chokidi Kyu-sang, Deputy Secretary General of BOI, will share more about the many initiatives by Thailand to attract investors later on in his presentation. As many of us may be aware, Thailand has also set up an authority to oversee the development and strategies of the Eastern Corridor of Thailand which offers immense opportunities to business people. I believe that Mr. Ausuton Was Susan of Eastern Economic Corridor, Office of Thailand, will share with you on the incentive available to you for operating in this strategic eastern part of Thailand. With a premium on markets, with a good digital infrastructure, Thailand is indeed a land where opportunities beckon. I strongly encourage all attendees to put in your queries via the Q&A icon on your screen and to leverage on the expertise of the distinguished speakers here today to understand on the new updates in Thailand for business people. The SMF, together with Royal Thai Embassy in Singapore, sincerely thank both speakers and participants for your support and we assure you of our commitment to assist the business communities of both countries to forge ties to each other for mutual benefit. We are indeed very grateful for the leadership and wisdom of the ambassador in making all this happen. Thank you very much and wishing all good health and happiness. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Douglas Fu, President of the Singapore Manufacturing Federation. It is now my great honor to invite our guest of honor who is none other than the ambassador designate of the of Thailand to Singapore, Dr. Sri Riya Chindawan. He will be giving you to his opening address for this webinar. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, please, Your Excellency. Yes, um, good afternoon. Uh, uh, it's a great honor. I'm trying to see myself on the screen, but I'm not there yet. Oh, there I am. Okay, so just want to thank, first of all, the Singapore Manufacturing Federation and especially Douglas Fu for uh, helping, partnering with us uh, to organize this important webinar at a very opportune time under extraordinary circumstances. I think that's the situation all of us face. And I recall having a conversation with Douglas about how we can take forward the partnership between uh, Thailand and Singapore during these extraordinary times. And this is the first of many steps which we're trying to do to use his words to reconnect, to reinvigorate, and to relaunch some of the economic business activities that has always made the Thailand-Singapore uh, business and economic partnership and a very important one for our two countries and for the region as a whole. Um, yes, we were one of the first countries um, to recognize Singapore. That's, I think we're the seventh country, uh, the first uh, uh, non-Commonwealth and non-Francophone country to do so, and we're proud of that. So our relations go a long way back. I shall not dwell too much in the past, uh, but really move uh, on a foundation of the present in order for us to have a momentum for the future. And just let me say, um, uh, in thanking our, our dear friends from Thailand, the key experts uh, from BOI, FTI, and EC who are here, let me just kick off a little bit by saying that this partnership between Thailand and Singapore is grounded on not only strategic and long-term relations, but also on very strong business and economic ties. I'm just browsing over the figures. Uh, I think in the first quarter of this year, the uh, first three months of this year, we already have uh, Singapore as uh, the top FDI in Thailand. And also uh, it is one of the main destinations for Thai FDI. Uh, Singapore is the destination for Thai FDI, uh, the number one destination as well. So we are closely linked. Now, what can we do to strengthen it, to move it forward? I'm, I suppose in the limited time I have, uh, to focus on three quick things, uh, the triple strategy, if I may say, uh, which I think many countries are doing, and then I'll give a little bit of Thai flavor, and then I'll let our key experts and speakers from the Thai side 
uh, take it forward. Uh, of course, the first one, these three are, we got to flatten the pandemic curve. I have to say something briefly about the pandemic situation. Uh, we have to secondly, of course, uh, pursue the economic recovery and quickly. And these are, there are policies in place for that. And thirdly, we have to start positioning ourselves for the post COVID-19 landscape and scenario. And these three things will be, have to be undertaken simultaneously. Uh, it's not as if it's going to be a sequential process. Uh, so very quickly on the pandemic curve, where are we? Uh, what's the situation of the COVID uh, in Thailand? Because this is an important uh, foundation for many business decisions as well. Uh, well, first of all, you know, it's very interesting that about two, several months ago, uh, we had a Channel News Asia video program, which uh, gave not a very optimistic view of, um, of Thailand in general and also on the pandemic. I think the wording used was that we were lucky. Uh, my, my philosophy, and looking at uh, from what has happened, it's uh, not luck. Uh, fortune favors the brave, and that's what I always take to be the way forward. And if you look at what has happened with the policies we've in place, we have a situation in Thailand where the numbers are, uh, I just checked about an hour ago, uh, 3,269 total infections, right? This is accumulated, uh, of which 3,100 have recovered. Uh, we have uh, 58 deaths, which is a very small number compared to uh, many other countries. Um, and so we've had uh, only single digit increases. Um, and they're all imported cases. Uh, there are no community cases now for the last uh, more than 50 days. Uh, but we're not at the, out of the woods yet. We still have to continue to exercise caution, uh, to pursue the necessary health policies. And, and what have we done? in order to achieve these numbers, which is a good foundation, uh, we believe, for the reopening of our economy. Uh, basic thing is that we've had a very strong uh, partnership between the government, the people, and the civil society, and, and everyone else, uh, including one million uh, public health village volunteers who have helped to promote the type of policies that we're all doing, wearing face masks, safe distancing, and many others. And these have been one of the key reasons why we have kept the numbers down to flatten the pandemic curve, so to speak. And this, I think, has been the success uh, so far, uh, but we're not out of the woods yet, of this uh, anti-pandemic effort has been the basis whereby we have reopened our economy. We're now in what we call phase five uh, of, of our opening. And we are in the process of uh, letting more and more uh, foreign nationals uh, including those for business reasons and interests to travel to Thailand and therefore to help uh, in the uh, economic recovery. And this leads to my second point, which is the issue of uh, economic recovery. How do we do it? What are we going to do to help uh, lay the basis for a recovery of the economy, of which many other countries are doing as well? We all know that there are estimates for contractions, and this is um, prevalent uh, elsewhere in the region, but there are also estimates that we Thailand will bounce back, um, hopefully by next year, 2021. I think OECD gave figures of uh, 3.5 to 5% um, you know, uh, increase of GDP next year, uh, if all factors are, are you know, uh, go in the right direction. Uh, the fundamentals of the Thai economy are still strong. Our financial system, um, our market size, as been mentioned, our business dynamism, uh, the strong healthcare system, which is increasingly an important uh, you know, consideration. Uh, as well as the very strong professional uh, civil service and technocrats who are laying the foundations for the recovery in support of government policies. Now, the policy is clear. Uh, the goals are to the ease the expense burden, to add revenue, uh, and also to sustain economic sectors. We are trying to make sure that entrepreneurs, blue-collar workers, households, SMEs, and other drivers and agents of the economic process have the liquidity in order to pursue the economic recovery during these times. Uh, so these are the fundamental goals that we have uh, for the short term. What are the instruments we have in place? Well, uh, as in many other countries, we have a, an economic uh, package. Uh, I've converted it, and if my arithmetic is correct, uh, 111 billion Singapore dollars, uh, which is around 15.5% of the GDP in the economic uh, package uh, that we will have in order to help uh, the recovery process. Um, one third of that is in the economic and financial system stabilization measures. Another third is in financial relief measures. And of course, we also have tax relief measures and other relief measures as well. 
the approach, okay, that's the package. What is the approach? The approach has been to work in partnership, partnerships, partnerships, partnerships between the government and the private sector, uh, government and innovators, between the government and entrepreneurs. Uh, this is how we're going to get things back on track, and that has been approached as announced uh, by the Thai Prime Minister. And that is why the practical, app, the practical results is that we're now in the fifth phase of the economic recovery opening, and we are looking forward to the sixth phase, whereby more and more sectors will be open in order to uh, reinvigorate uh, the economy uh, during these times. So that is essentially the economic recovery aspect. The third uh, part of the deal uh, is what it's going to be like in the future. And we cannot wait until recovery is ready in order to begin thinking about that. It has to begin simultaneously. What do we do in the post-COVID-19 uh, situation? What is the future direction? Well, essentially, uh, the philosophy is that we will have to build back better. Uh, this is uh, being done in Thailand and in other places. We will have to look at how we can be more innovative two key words, innovation and sustainability. All right, innovation and sustainability. How can we bring in technology, uh, new business practices, uh, new ideas in order to move forward our economy, which may be more digitalized uh, given the trends. And, but also equally important, how can we ensure that everything that we're doing is sustainable? So what do we have there? Key factors, digitalization, uh, Douglas has mentioned about the various policies that we have in place. Uh, Digital Thailand uh, 4.0, these are the uh, things that we're trying to do to in order to enhance the digitization of our economy. The COVID-19 situation has been an accelerator for this to move further forward. We are strengthening uh, our supply chains uh, to make it more smart. Uh, we are uh, taking steps to ensure a healthy labor force. So this is very important for the future. And of course, two of the key areas where we hope to bring in technologies in order to, uh, to reinforce our two key strengths, um, but there are others as well, but I just highlight these two. Uh, these are, for example, in the food industry, and this will be very important, a very strategic industry and for now and into the future, as well as our medical and healthcare services, amongst many others, all right? So we're gonna have to move towards becoming more innovative. At the same time, sustainability is very important, and therefore we are adopting what we call the biocircular green economic model. What can we do to make use resources more effectively, produce minimal waste, reduce the impact on carbon emissions to be sustainable? All right, and these are the things that we're going to have to do in order to be prepared for the post-COVID landscape. And of course, regional integration, very important. Uh, I agree with Douglas the strengthening of the ASEAN economic community, which is one of the three pillars of the ASEAN community. The ASEAN summit that we just convened online, the very first summit that was, has been convened online, re-emphasized the need to remain connected. We need sustainable supply chains, but we need more than that. We need to pursue the process of economic integration to really create that single market and production base to make it really effective. And these are things that have to come into play as we prepare for the future. Of course, the RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, we are strongly supporting this agreement to be in place, uh, signed by this year, and we hope that this process will continue. We have different agencies and different models, different strategies in place that will take this forward. I'm very happy that the, we have a very strong representative from the Eastern Economic Corridor, EEC, uh, which will provide uh, greater views, uh, more information on how the, this will be an important uh, investment platform, uh, for not only for Thailand, but for the uh, Mekong sub-region market, as well as for the ASEAN economic community. Uh, important um, advances there, whether it's in the field of automation robotics, or next generation automobile, medical and comprehensive healthcare, um, and food for the future. Just some of the things that we can expect to see from the EEC. And these are opportunities. These are opportunities for all of us as we look to the future. I'm not going to take too much time now. I think I've um, uh, reached the limit. Let me just say that Thailand and Singapore, we've been through it all before. You know, we went through the 97 economic crisis uh, in, and, and other crises. We've all come out more resilient and, and more dynamic. And it is this partnership between Singapore and Thailand, driven by the private sectors of the two countries, that will get us uh, through even stronger to build back better into a more digitalized, integrated 
sustainable economy. So I look very forward very much to hearing the presentations by all our speakers from the Thai side, as well as from uh, private sectors here in Singapore, and to wish this webinar much success and the embassy is here to be a strong partner for the SMF and other private sector uh, people in this regard. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. It is now my pleasure to invite Mr. Chok D. Khao San, Deputy Secretary General of the Board of Investment of Thailand, to give his presentation. Mr. Chok D. Khao San, please. Okay, <laughs> sorry for uh, some technical. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Um, my topic today is uh, investment opportunities and BI support measures. And I just like to focus on three points. First, on the current situation and outlook of investment and uh, industry. And secondly, just like to touch a little bit on investment opportunities. And third, uh, on the BIS measure to stimulate investment. Um, just to give you a snapshot on the current situation and outlook of the investment and, and industry. If you take a look at the uh, investment project that apply for in promotional privileges uh, for, the, for, for the, from the BI for the first five months of this year and compared to last year, we have seen uh, declining uh, investment application. So in terms of the number of projects, actually uh, a little bit increased from the previous uh, uh, year, 3% in terms of number of projects. But uh, if you look at the investment value, it decreased by 27%. Uh, this is not a surprise, actually. Um, in terms of the foreign investment, uh, for the first time in five years, that China has become uh, the largest uh, foreign uh, country that make investment in Thailand, uh, surpassing Japan, that uh, have been number one for the past uh, four decades. And uh, probably this is one of the, uh, the, the, the result of the trade war between uh, China and US and making a Chinese company to Sorry. Uh, resulting Chinese company to relocate from uh, from China to ASEAN, including Thailand. And Singapore has been number three investing nation uh, because uh, for the first five months of this year, there are some large investment projects from Singapore uh, that applying for investment promotion. And apart from investment from Singapore is uh, actually come from foreign company in Singapore, Japanese, European company or US company expanding their business from Singapore to Thailand. So that's why Singapore has become the third largest investing nation. Um, in terms of uh, industrial sector, we have seen declining application for logistic tourism related uh, businesses and automotive. There are some investment projects applying for investment promotion that compared to last year, we have seen declining number. Uh, for automotive, there are uh, companies that are applying for investment to produce parts and components for uh, electric vehicles. 
for the new model. And for the sector that we have seen increasing uh, investment application, both in terms of numbers and in terms of the investment value, uh, medical products, a lot of uh, medical products, medical devices that uh, apply for investment promotion for the first five months of this year. Examination clause, they have been, they have not uh, applied for VR promotion for many, many years for examination clause, but for the first five months of this year, there are some company that uh, start to, to, to expand their investment. Uh, surgical mask, we approved more than 16 projects for the first five months of this year. Uh, almost double the number of projects that we approved in the past 10 years. So a lot of projects applying for face mask, surgical mask, hand sanitizer, for example. Digital products, uh, parts and component for making hard drive. You know, electronic product, actually, uh, they are both uh, declining uh, products and increasing products. So the product related to hard drive related to digital economy, actually we have seen increasing number of the investment application. Um, so looking ahead, um, I think the, there are at least six uh, investment trends according to, to what we have discussed among our uh, uh, investment, uh, uh, you know, um, BUI executives and our, our staff. Probably we are going to see more more investment to develop new technology. Uh, Ambassador has already mentioned that uh, digital technology is one of the sector that we are going to see more investment, allow work to be performed at any time and from anywhere. And we are going to see uh, more investment to strengthen the healthcare services and infrastructure, uh, particularly for medical devices. And we will see more investment to, in order to achieve more balance and sustainable development. So bio economy, circular economy and green economy is one of the uh, economic model that adopted by the Thai government in order to drive or to move the country forward. And apart from that, uh, we have seen uh, investment to enhance productivities. Many company uh, actually taking this opportunity to, to enhance productivity. Uh, during crisis, there are also opportunities. So some companies would like to restructure and adjust their business model to, in order to be more competitive post COVID. Um, investment to diversify from the central area to local community is not only by, by the, uh, uh, it's not only driven by, by market mechanism, but by design. Actually, uh, the government has already ordered BI to come up with the policy to promote more uh, domestic investment and, and for investment in order to stimulate uh, local community because uh, there are more unemployment as a result of, of the COVID pandemic. So we need to create more investment in the rural area, in the remote area. And we are going to see the rearrangement of the supply chain. Uh, these are not only uh, the impact from COVID-19, but uh, actually it's a result of the trade war between China and China and US. So we have seen more. We are going to see more reloc relocation of investment from China to, to ASEAN countries, including Thailand. And I, I, I got this uh, information from the uh, Sam Commercial Bank, uh, they conducted the study and uh, looking ahead what, what kind of, of uh, industry, industrial sectors that are going to be declining, what sector to be uh, to reach a mature state and what, what kind of uh, industry that to enjoy the growing demand. Uh, restaurant, tourism related, hotel, aviation, automotive, real estate, these are declining industry in the next three years. Logistic, electronic manufacturing infrastructure, energy and petrochemical, it would be uh, the, the industry that the demand or domestic demand is quite mature in the next uh, three years. And the green sector, including medical uh, and healthcare sector, 
uh, digital technology and consumer goods, including uh, food products. Um, looking specifically at the uh, medical devices, uh, Ambassador has already mentioned uh, there are growing demand in uh, diagnostic test kit, ventilator, respirators, uh, face masks, or uh, PPE, personal protection equipment, or uh, uh, examination cloth, for example. So, so these are the, the, the demand that is going to, to grow uh, probably uh, exponentially in the next three years in the medical sector. Um, demand for digital services uh, also skyrocket across uh, sectors. So according to the uh, survey conducted by a consulting firm in Thailand, all digital services expand, uh, such as the online shopping, the food delivery, streaming content, uh, games, and virtual meeting. And some business operators enjoy exponential growth uh, for example, uh, the digital content platform like Netflix uh, gaining more than 15 million subscribers worldwide. Uh, Shopee, another leading e-commerce platform, uh, received more than 400% increase in user numbers in Thailand. Lazada, another online shopping platform, enjoy more than 100% increase uh, in user numbers in Thailand, and online booking, online car booking like uh, Lime Man gain around 100% increase in, in their Korea average income. And uh, among these uh, various e commerce platforms in Thailand, healthcare products and consumer products are the top uh, in demand by uh, actually domestic uh, consumers. Um, Ambassador has already said that the Thailand is uh, has been digitalized. Actually, we, we, we are well on our way to achieving digital transformation. However, COVID-19 uh, accelerate the transformation process. So looking ahead, the every business sector must find the solution to sustain or to grow business in the long term by either increase uh, efficiency by building new business model or creating creating new new growth and new S curve. And digital technology will be the key, uh, you know, to be used across uh, sectors. And as I, I mentioned uh, at the outset that the trade war plus uh, COVID-19 resulting in the rearrangement of the supply chain, the global supply chain, the regional supply chain. So there might be some company producing product for China only. There are some company re relocating from China back to their home countries. And there are some company relocating uh, investment from China to ASEAN, including Thailand. So Vietnam and Thailand would be the top two priority countries that Chinese investors are looking to expand investment. Uh, let me move on to my second part of the presentation. What, what we are seeing, uh, the investment opportunities that going to, uh, to, to offer for both Thai and foreign companies. Uh, actually, we still targeting on the 10 uh, industries that uh, would be the engine of growth uh, to drive Thailand economy forward. Ambassador has already mentioned that uh, this government also adopt the BCT model, bioeconomy, circular, and screen economy in order to achieve more balanced and sustainable growth. Um, actually, digital economy and medical devices and automation would be the key sector that uh, the demand would be recovering very soon compared to other sectors. So we have come up with the number of policies in order to promote investment in these 10 industrial sectors. Uh, for biochemical, actually we focus on um, 
bioplastics and you know we have a lot of uh, bio uh, materials sugarcane cassava bio uh, palm oil for example that can be used to to be produced and processed into higher value added products uh, agricultural and biotechnology actually we are still focusing on the smart farming so company would like to help agricultural sector uh, to upgrade their productivity by not only doing more mechanization but uh, probably uh, using the the system the smart system uh, to help upgrading the productivity so the software the system integration uh, to help upgrading this sector are very uh, important for us smart electronics a lot of, a lot of investment from china supplier of facebook supplier of google supplier of amazon relocate some part and component making to thailand uh, medical hub uh, actually we have seen growing demand in medical devices um, automation and robotics uh, actually we are, we are has come up with the the measure to promote both the supply and and, and demand side so we we promote the company to produce uh, uh, automation, automated machinery uh, to produce uh, automation system. At the same time, we grant tax incentive to the company who used that uh, automation system to upgrade or to enhance productivity. So that's what we we call the measure for promoting both the supply and demand side. Um, next generation automotive. Actually, we focus on uh, electric cars, electric vehicles. Uh, we have come up with a policy uh, in the past three years promoting electric vehicles and now uh, five japanese brand and two european brands but we are promotion to produce uh, electric car in thailand they have the plan to to produce uh, including hybrid plug-in hybrid and purely uh, electric vehicles so they are the opportunity for part and component making to supply uh, the growing demand for electric car uh, in, in the next three years. Uh, food, we have been the kitchen of the world. We produce a lot of food products, but in order to move to Thailand 4.0, we try to focus more on medical food, health food, uh, food ingredients or higher value added products and uh, we need more investment and more technology more advanced technology in uh, producing this kind of food um, for aviation uh, and logistics actually we might see uh, the slowdown uh, uh, in, 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 in the coming three years And if you look at the opportunity in digital product and service in particular, um, uh, and I has mentioned that uh, the opportunity are very huge in the healthcare sector, in the education, in the smart farming, and in the manufacturing sector. Uh, you know, there are two sectors in Thailand that should be moving toward Thailand 4.0 or industry 4.0 so faster than any other sector that 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 would be automotive and electric and electronic products and they need digital technology in order to uh, to um, upgrade I talked with a lot of uh, uh, past uh, car uh, car makers uh, part and company maker then they try to introduce the IOT system and automation system in order to enhance the, the, the uh, productivity the demand is slow down but they need to upgrade the productivity and reduce uh, production cost. Let me uh, move to my last point of the presentation. So what we are can help in order to promote investment? Actually, we are the government agency that offering tax incentive in order to, to reduce initial investment costs and improve return on investment for the company investing in Thailand. And uh, immediately after the crisis, we focus on medical industry because they are increasing demand uh, in the, uh, you know, 
แอลกอฮอล์ปรดักชันเซนิไทเซอร์เซอร์จิคอลมาสรอมาเทียลยูสทูปรดิวส์มิดิฟอร์ดิเวอร์เซอร์มิดิฟอร์ปรดักส์โซ่ the first uh, come the the first policy focus on on medical products so additional tax incentive are provided to company produce producing medical devices uh, both uh, finished product and raw materials and so a lot of a number of measures and an incentive are provided if you are interested in medical devices and medical product i will be more happy to to talk with you later on and we try to promote investment in the long term not only looking at the short term so these are the tax incentive provided to the company Are looking to invest in Thailand for the long term, so we we use the activity approach and technology approach in order to grant incentive. Uh, so incentive will be granted up to 10 years, depending on the product, depending on the activity that you are doing in Thailand. And apart from 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 that, uh, incentive will be provided according to the areas, according to the location, and the merit of the project. So Eastern Economic Corridor (EEC) in short are uh, one of the area that has been designated uh, as the uh, the the industrial complex to 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 develop Thailand uh, more advanced advanced uh, industrial sector. So additional incentive will be granted to to company located in the EEC area. Um, industrial parks, uh, uh, the other area as well. Uh, additional incentive will be granted. Um, I will be more than happy to discuss in greater details if you have any question regarding this. And um, that that is the end of my presentation, and I will be more than happy to answer any question if I have. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kong Odi. And now it is my pleasure to invite Mr. An Su Ton Wan Su Chan, Deputy Director of Eastern Economic Corridor of Thailand, to give his presentation. Mr. An Su Ton, please. Yes. Um, Mr. Douglas Fu, the President, Singapore uh, Manufacturing Federation, Ambassador Surya Jinda Wong, Mr. Shok Di Kiang San, Deputy Secretary General of BOI. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. สวัสดีครับ um, First of all, I would like to begin by thank you, thanking, thanking Royal Thai Embassy to Singapore for giving EEC the opportunity to speak at this webinar. I also would like to express my appreciations for Singapore Manufacturing Federation in organizing these events. I truly appreciate the opportunity to speak with a group of Singapore business executives this time. Uh, first of all, I would like to explain the stage of the EEC projects. Um, since EEC Acts and EEC Development Plans was approved by the cabinet in uh, 2018, uh, the major infrastructure project for developing the new ecosystem has been forgotten. But since uh, starting from 2019, the EEC development is moved moved to phase three, that the target industry promotion activity has been conducted. Uh, and uh, supporting uh, activities such as the land use uh, has been announced uh, last year. And for the investment supporting system, EEC One Stop Service system has been developed. And as of the present presentation today, I will discuss about the phase four of the developments of EEC projects, which includes Smart City later on. Um, The next, I would like to explain about the transportation infrastructure in EEC. The EEC project is one of the most significant investments drivers in infrastructure of Thailand. We believe that it will foster economic activity, GDP growth, and social developments, not only for Thailand but also other countries in mainland ASEAN through interconnectivity. According to EEC infrastructure, infrastructure development plans within year 2027, uh, for example, double track railway will be expanded more than 392 kilometers, and total double track railway will cover 740 kilometers. In terms of Uttapau Airport developments, 
the capacities of the airport can serve 60 million passengers per year. And as for the port developments, the capacity of Lam Chabang port will reach 18 million TEU per year. And the capacities of Mapta Put Industrial Port will be uh, 31 million tons per year. And last but not least is intercities motorway will expand more than 200 kilometer within 2027. And this is the timeline of the major PPP infrastructure project in EEC. EEC. Uh, clearly, the contracts of major three projects, namely High Speed Rail Links 3 Airport, Utapau Airport, and Matapur Port, has been signed. For the Lamsabang Port, a uh, private sector negotiation process is ongoing. And the contract can be signed in last quarters of this year. And we expect that uh, the major infrastructure will start the operation in year 2025 to 2026. Uh, in the detail, first, I would like to explain a little bit about the uh, high speed rail link three airport and their uh, progress. Um, the high speed rail links can connect uh, Bangkok to EEC area within 60 minutes. As for the development plan, Transit Orient Developments or TOD will be constructed in Makassan Mark area in Bangkok and Siracha Pattaya in Chumburi province. Uh, for the plans, in next year, the handover to to Utapau will be conducted and private sector will start operating the current uh, airport buildings from Suvanapum Airport to, Pattaya, to Payatai Station. In terms of Utapau Airport and uh, Eastern Airport City, uh, the upgrading Utapau Airport will serve as the third international airport of Bangkok. But not only um, airport itself, but also the related business infrastructure and eastern airport city will be developed in this area. Uh, in terms of airport city, uh, the business center and logistic free trade zone, uh, MRO logistic hub and aviation training center will be established. And for uh, Mataput Industrial Port Phase 3, uh, the development plans will consist of two terminals, natural gas and liquid uh, material, including uh, related facilities. Uh, Post construction will begin uh, in 2025 and the operation will start in 2026. And last but not least is about Lam Chabang Port Phase 3. Uh, Lam Chabang Port will use the automated system and advanced full scale service. The Port Authority of Thailand will begin the construction in, in these years uh, after the private sector negotiations process is finished. In the meantime of the development, the uh, logistics system uh, also uh, has been focused, particularly in terms of the real transport for cargo in Lam Chabang Port. Uh, after the project, uh, the the, the, the real transport cargo will reach to 30% coverage in 2026. EEC not focus only on uh, transport infrastructure, but also uh, business infrastructure has, has been focused. Uh, one of that is the 5G infrastructure. Uh, Thailand did 5G auction to grant license for operator of 5G service in Thailand and hope to adopt the 5G network as it will support the development of smart infrastructure in EEC. Uh, within the first years of 5G network, net, network developments or July 2021, the company uh, will construct the 5G infrastructure and provide coverage of 50% of economic promoted zone in EEC, which including uh, the core infrastructures, industrial estate and the smart city. Um, as of the presentation of, of Mr. Shok, the, uh, the 10 targeted industry, uh, which can be divided into, into two groups. The first one is about S-curve industry that Thailand already have cons uh, considerable capability and competitiveness. The second is the new S-curve industry that Thailand have potential for, as well as those that will be 
uh, instrumental to Thailand 4.0. Uh, this slide shows the five uh, promoted zones for the specific industry where investors can get the best incentive and privilege for the business, uh, such as EECH. This means the Transit Orient Development or TOD, which will be constructed in Silasha and Pattaya area. EECMD is the medical research and development and service ecosystem in Chonburi. Uh, EECA is the aviation industry and related service facility hub that will be con constructed near Utapau Airport. Particularly, EECI and EECD will be promoted as special technological zone. The EECI or innovation park will be developed to serve as a lab laboratory and necessary facility that the research and development firm can collaborate with the leading investor in innovator in developing technologies and innovation. EECI is expected that to be available for launch in 2021. Moreover, the EECD will host high tech facility to support digital business and smart city developments uh, such as big data, and crowd, uh, smart infrastructure, and smart city platform. In terms of the timelines of developments of EE EECD, the EECD project proposal will be requested from the private sector and invested in November uh, this year. Here I would like to uh, explain a little bit about the progress of the EECI. Um, in order to, for innovative product development to take place, uh, the research are required, particularly in upstream and downstream research. One of the main objectives of EECI development is to enhance an innovation ecosystem to upgrade the collaboration between academic sector and private sector. Uh, as of EECI development, the scaling up facility that will be set up in EECI uh, will be a translation research hub, uh, breeding research and investments across Thailand. Um, in ECI, the, tar the sixth target uh, business, uh, namely uh, modern agriculture, biofuel and biochemical, medical device, automation, robotics and smart electronics, uh, modern transport and aviation will be focused in EECI. In ECI, five technology platform, namely Biopolis, focus on bio-based industry, Aripolis, focusing on automation, robotic and smart electronics, Foods Inopolis, Space Inopolis, focusing on uh, aviation industry, and Synchrotron will be set up here. Particularly in the progress of the Biopolis the collaboration with BioBase Europe pilot plant, the bio refinery facility, where private sector can engage in scaling up and demonstration and research for product developments will be extra bit. Uh, the main facilities of in, inside the bio, uh, Biopolis, such as the large scale fermentation facility, functional ingredient extraction, um, all of which meet the good manufacturing practice or GMP standards will be constructed. This slide uh, shows the, the overviews, overalls of the EECI and the near the area developments. Um, not only the EECI's and smart innovation platform, but also the related uh, facility, including the smart city will be developed in the same area. As of June 2020, the infrastructure development in ECI is completed more than 80% and ECI headquarter is completed more than 40%. That we can expect that the ECI can operate in 2021. <clears throat> Next slide, I would like to uh, talk about the smart city development plans in the EEC. Um, our focus will be on the development last scale urbanizing, urbanization in the EEC to prepare the movements of the people into the area, both for work and for better quality of life. 
In the study of livable smart city, we did by did, did with JB. Um, nine layer of livable and social um, factors and seven smartness such as smart digital, smart environments uh, has been identified down to the kinds of technology need. Um, in terms of the smart city developments, it's not only improving the qualities of lives of the people, but also create a new business opportunity with the related targeted industry. Uh, for example, uh, in terms of the smart energy, the smart grid and renewable energy will be promoted in the new city. Uh, the most important for the smart city is the smart city uh, data platform. Uh, EEC also focus on this and the city uh, data platform uh, can be integrated or the seven smart need to be uh, developed in the new city in EAC area. Um, this slide shows the, the EEC smart city plan. Uh, we are in the process of selecting an area for a greenfield development uh, with an area of uh, 3,000 hectares uh, for 500,000 people uh, in the first phase, and which will then be expanded into a total area of uh, 10,000 hectares uh, for 1 million uh, population in 10 years. Uh, there will also be uh, biofuel projects for smart city development in the EEC, uh, such as Lam Chabang and Rayong. Uh, this project will try to integrate uh, aspects of smartness into existing cities. Uh, apart from the EC office, the boards of investments and digital economy promotion agency are working together uh, with local uh, authorities to promote and provide incentive for smart city in Thailand. Uh, for example, in Lam Chabang, we wish to start by working on smart mobility to manage the traffic around the Lam Shabang seaport more effectively. EECA or EEC Aerotropolis is one of the sample uh, of the integration developments with concern the linkage between the infrastructure developments, targeted industry, and the smart city developments. Um, this slide shows the connectivity of the all uh, key uh, development factors. The last but not least, I would like to explain uh, the, the policy and the situation of the EEC uh, under the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, according to the COVID-19 pandemic, the sectors of COVID-19 impact can be split into four groups based on impact and recovery. Um, the global pandemic is uh, accelerating global megatrend in three areas. The first is digital megatrend. The customers start to change the point of view that digital as an option to digital by default. The second is health megatrend. The health safety will be a business as a personal priorities. And the last one is the logistic. The logistics is one of the megatrend is in terms of the accelerations of the e-commerce. And during and after COVID-19, EEC will focus the investment promotion related in this mega trend. Uh, as all 5G roll out in EEC, 5G will be uh, utilized in each industry, particularly in terms of enhancing productivity and the recreation. And in terms of the healthcare and well-being, uh, geriatric uh, healthcare is one of the target business that's shown high growth during COVID-19 and high potential in the future. Uh, these are three industries which are relevant to the, this mega trend. Uh, agricultural sectors will supply the raw material to food sector and, and cosmetical. Uh, in terms of the healthcare, physician medicine, will be, which based on the genomic data, will be the high potential in the future. The last but not least is the theme of the logistic. The evasion, particularly in airline business, is facing big impact of the COVID-19. Uh, however, the logistic, including air cargo, is still important 
for the supply chain system in other industries. Uh, furthermore, the studies of the International Air Transport Association or IATA uh, forecast that uh, even the, the air traffic slowed down during the pandemic, but it will uh, recover in 2023 or 2024. Therefore, the logistics is still the high potential business in the future. So this is all my presentation. Uh, there are uh, many opportunities of the investment in the smart city and smart infrastructure in the EEC in the next decade. And then although uh, COVID-19 pandemic situation is un un uncertain, the EEC office will work closely with the BOI to keep you uh, up to date with all the investments opportunity available. We will do all we can to make sure that your investments are successful in the uh, undertaking. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Mr. Ang Sultan. It is now my pleasure to invite Mr. Jamura, Director General of the Federation of Thai Industries, to give his presentation. Mr. Jamura, please. Yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon, dear Mr. Douglas Fu, President of the Singapore Manufacturer of uh, Federations. Um, His Excellency, Dr. Surya Chinda Wong, Ambassador Descendant of the Thailand to Singapore. and uh, Mr. Cho Di uh, Kao Sang, Deputy Secretary General of the Board of the Investment of Thailand. Um, my name is Jam Lan. I am the Director General of the, uh, the Federation of the Thai Industry. Um, today, I would like to uh, present uh, some uh, interesting points of why the Singapore they choose the, uh, Thailand as the uh, destination for the uh, investment. Uh, could you show me the slides? Okay, okay. Um, so uh, for the first topic, that's it about the uh, Thailand now considered at the uh, supply chain, the list uh, management for the uh, many country. Uh, as you know that the uh, right now, there is many of the uh, trade war uh, by the US China, US in, uh, China, India, and also the uh, uh, during the trade war situation, uh, many country there are concerns that they have, they have to they have, uh, select their some country to they, uh, diversify the list of the uh, supply chain. And so, so Thailand now is the, uh, considered as the strategic country for the uh, supply chain list management. Uh, for, uh, for example, in case of the Japan, uh, Japan have a strategy they call the uh, Thailand plus one. The Thailand plus one means that the uh, uh, because at Japan, they have uh, been invest in the uh, Japan for their long time, and for example, like the automobile industry, and so they have built up like the uh, facility in Thailand, like say, like for example, like the uh, human resource capital. They also they have their skill label here. So Thailand choose uh, Japan choose Thailand as the uh, center of the country of the CRMV, and uh, so they can expand their business to their neighborhood or country. So in this case, there are many of kind of major countries in the world. So consider Thailand as their one choice to diversify the list of the supply chain. And as well as in their COVID uh, situation, uh, right now you cannot rely on in the end only one country to the produce the whole of their your supply. And so you have to consider that some country that have their another choice for their, uh, your lease management. And the second, the second point is about the, the cost. Uh, some person, uh, someone that may consider that their Thailand right now is the higher of their salary wages, but you can see that the, uh, the lower cost is not only the, is not a clear solution, but is that you can, you, you can, you can the, uh, balance the list at the answer of the don't put the, all your eggs in the one basket. Okay. The second thing is that uh, the total economic cost of the production is the key uh, of the, for their manufacturing. Um, you may you may heard that the uh, uh, Thailand we have the uh, move the our some the manufacturing go to the our neighbor country, right? Go to the Cambodia, go to the Laos or the Myanmar. 
for example, like the garment industry. Um, finally, after we moved to the factory uh, for our neighbor for their uh, five years or something, and uh, we have the interesting number. Uh, we found that the, uh, it's not the uh, uh, slight the, uh, success, it, it's not the uh, only the salary wages that is uh, compared to Thailand. Uh, for example, in the same uh, manufacturing, they have their two sides. One side is they are still keep in Thailand, and the other side go to their lower salary wages country. But finally, when they compare as their total cost of their production, it's it found, it's, it's, it found that the, uh, uh, the productivity in Thailand is a bit still better than in go to the neighbor country because uh, you can see the productivity of the people. Uh, for the, right now, we have the skilled labor Thailand. It's a, uh, we have the, uh, like the real trades of the people for a long time. And so for the same of the people, they can they produce the more the productivity to compare to the other country. So it means that they are, you just not look at the one single of their data, right? Their salary wages, the land cost, or even the uh, some the <clears throat> some the uh, economic data, but then you have to look at the total cost of their productions. And the another another point is about the uh, Thailand. We have the good of the infrastructure. For example, now we have the electricity, water, and even the, the transportation, the logistic the system that they can the support to the worldwide. And uh, so right now, uh, we have seen the many of the global company they moved to the Thailand, and uh, we found that the uh, is a very have the short time of the set up the uh, manufacturing here. Uh, you can they have this like the uh, uh, lento of the warehouse. Uh, you have the lento of the uh, factory uh, in Thailand, and you can uh, start up the business in just uh, three months or uh, six months. This is uh, very fast. And the, the, the third one is about the government support. Um, you see that the uh, government, the Thai economy, is the, basically depend on the export, which uh, account more than 60% of the country, the GDP. So it means that the, the most of the government policy are focused on their manufacturing in order to help stop the industry to be able to compete with the global market. Um, the, our the federation, the FTI, the Federation of the Thai Industry, we are the focal point that uh, both, uh, work closely with the Thai government in terms of the uh, help to the solve of the, some the, uh, difficulty, the issue, or uh, it also we also have the uh, uh, have the proposal of the promotion to the Thai industry go to the compete with the global market. So that's why that's it, the uh, export of the business manufacturing is a very the key concern of the for the Thai government to have their focus and to have their many the support of their incentive and also support in terms of the uh, um, measurements. And the and the last one is that about the uh, the consumer, when you are compared with the uh, made in Thailand product compared to the other country product, it's still the uh, like the uh, most the uh, preferred choice. Uh, even the the pricing of the made in Thailand product is uh, higher because uh, I think the message, most of the uh, foreigner uh, they believe in the quality, believe in the uh, the branding, and believe in the uh, our the standard of the uh, Thai product. Uh, so you can uh, you can see that the uh, the Thai product when you go to the global market is a right there one of the uh, interesting uh, choice for the buyer, and so we have seen the many of the uh, uh, manufacturer from the our from the other country they move their factory to Thailand and they go to the uh, have the production here have the higher standard. Uh, with the uh, Thai, uh, the Thai standard, and uh, so they are, they can they are produce on the behalf of their made in Thailand product, and so they can get their more like their pricing on their compared to the other country, and so the last one, uh, the over the federation, the 
FTI, we are uh, uh, ready to help our friend from the Singapore to be located to facility to Thailand. And uh, we now, right now, we have the more than the 300 the staff uh, to the support the whole manufacturing for to the east of the doing business here, and uh, we are also the focal point uh, to the uh, have the discuss the uh, any issue together, and uh, we are ready to help you into the success the business in Thailand. So please do not hesitate to contact us uh, for any question, and uh, we hope to see you in Thailand soon. Thank you. Thank you. We've come to the very exciting portion that is the Q&A. And if you can see, there are many, many questions that have been uh, raised by our attendees. I will now pass the um, microphone to Mr. Douglas, who President of the Singapore Manufacturing Federation, to chair this Q&A session. Mr. Fu, please. Um. The questions have come in fast and furious. Uh, so maybe we could start. Um, Ambassador, there are a lot of interest on uh, knowing any plans for a green lane for the Singapore business people. Uh, thank you, Douglas. I, I was expecting that. Um, <laughs> let me just put it this way. As a diplomat, um, we, uh, Thailand has been looking at the possibility of green lanes with a small group of countries. And let me just say that it wouldn't be surprising if Singapore were to be in the group of countries that we're looking into. Uh, there, are, there are obviously incentives and there are already what we call uh, models to, to uh, look uh, as a reference. You know, we already have uh, what is happening between uh, Singapore and China. We expect to see happening between Singapore and Malaysia. So uh, I won't, I won't, uh, I don't count the eggs until they're hatched, uh, but I would be surprised if uh, it would be of great interest and it is being uh, considered right now. Thank you. Uh, okay, Thank my you. my big uh, my big big apologies actually because I was so um, yeah. excited to hear the <laughs> question and answer. Actually, I missed two very important sharing. I was no, no, no. Ambassador, Amb yeah. Ambassador opened a green lane for two of them. <laughs> <laughs> that green lane, I can confirm. <laughs> yeah. So my apology because uh, I've forgotten to introduce our two uh, distinguished speakers from Singapore. They um, first and foremost, it is my pleasure to invite Mr. Alex Perota, CEO of Interplex Holdings Private Limited, to share about his operation in Thailand. Uh, he has uh, various business in Thailand, and he is also in Singapore as well as elsewhere and he will be sharing with uh, the attendees here how he managed his global supply chain. Uh, Alex, please, and my apologies for not calling you. Okay, it's okay. Uh, I'll make it very short. Uh, let me see, first of all, um, can you once, uh, Emily, can you see the presentation? Yes, I can see the presentation. Perfect, perfect. Uh, first of all, um, His Excellency Ambassador uh, Dr. Surya Chinda Wangse and Mr. Uh, Douglas Fu, President of SMF. And ladies and gentlemen, I would like to give you the afternoon. Um, my name is uh, Alessandro Perrotta, and I'm the CEO of Interplex Holding, a multinational Singaporean based company uh, that has uh, business, uh, as Emily alluded to, uh, in uh, 13 countries. And we're specializing in uh, interconnect solution, um, high precision, and mechanical infrastructure system. Um, what I would like to share with you is a story, uh, a story that started it, uh, 30 years ago uh, with us uh, when we decided to form a joint venture with uh, an already small but established uh, Thai business uh, with Puna Pichat who um, has progressed over the years and the decades uh, to become a, a beautiful story, a story that continues to show growth and uh, a transformational story, I have to say, because it started as a, a sheet uh, metal forming company to now to be uh, one of the key um, sole supplier, and when I say sole, only supplier, 
of uh, uh, key customer in uh, in United States and in Europe uh, uh, that are focusing on the fast grow iCloud or data center system. Um, we are a, a company that uh, we have basically been uh, located in and growing actually from one site to three sites in Chiang Mai, a uh, beautiful area. And uh, there we basically employ roughly 600 employees. And uh, we have uh, specializing, as I will show you later a little bit, uh, on infrastructure system for the data center. Uh, but we are continuing to expand, as uh, been alluded by uh, Mr. Uh, Choki D. Um, that uh, there are changes in the supply chain and there are changes as, uh, around the world in terms of where to procure certain product. Um, uh, beside the Chiang Mai, we have also a, a small location manufacturing place uh, just outside Bangkok between the downtown and the main airport. So uh, it's a facility that is actually state of the art. Uh, we have invested uh, over the years of quite a bit of money. Just recently, uh, we have put in about $3 million uh, to establish additional capability as the business has continued to grow um, and, uh, and it will continue to be a part of our expansion, especially uh, during the COVID or the changes that COVID-19 is actually bringing to, uh, to this world. Um, our customers, as I mentioned, are, are very strong and very well-established players. Um, as you can see here, we're dealing with uh, people that have uh, worked uh, for a very long time in the general industrial space, uh, but as I alluded to, uh, also a player that are very strong in the uh, data center, data con space. It is in fact our uh, key uh, focus um, and strength uh, that it is around the data center, uh, a fast growing um, business for us, especially in the last uh, six months with, uh, with you know, uh, video conferencing, the amount of data that has been utilized has been really growing exponentially. It is a fascinating business because it does present uh, tremendous challenges, especially when it comes to uh, the structural uh, integrity of this, uh, these racks. As you can see, they're very tall and very heavy after they're fully loaded. And also uh, increasingly becoming important is a, a, an issue about thermal uh, dissipation. They're getting very hot, uh, this data center. And this is a company that basically has helped our customer to really uh, support uh, this next generation infrastructure system. It's a company that started, as I mentioned, um, by making uh, she metal and uh, expanding into this uh, infrastructure, what we call the infrastructure data center system. And beyond that, of course, it has moved into what we call it uh, industrial system, as well as outdoor cabinet, which has been a very successful business for us, especially when it comes to European customer. And of course, we have had also additional uh, side product that we're continuing to expand into. So basically a, a very good story and one that um, I, I continue to be proud of uh, with uh, my partner, Kuna Bichat, and uh, one that now we are considering to look at expanding given that, that there are changes in the global landscape that were alluded earlier by other presentation. By uh, kind of concluding uh, my story, why have we decided to go to Thailand a long time ago and why we consider Thailand a very important uh, uh, part of our strategy when it comes to supply chain, but also more importantly, how do we uh, fit across our customer base, which also have uh, been uh, since the trade war began and especially in the last six months, reevaluating their supply chain from more, uh, for less focus on efficiency and more focus on resiliency. Um, First of all, for us, Thailand has been a very stable and cost-effective uh, location. Um, I am to say that also um, has been very productive and very loyal workforce. Uh, our employee has been with us for a very long time and uh, they have been really helping us in uh, establishing a, a good, stable operation, which is important when you're dealing with a very high precision product and uh, where quality and cosmetic is extremely important. Uh, the infrastructure and supporting industry, as alluded to in the previous presentation, are, are there and they're expanding and they're becoming substantial. Uh, it is an easy place to do business and also an easy place to get your customer to come to visit. It's beautiful, especially Chiang Mai. The geographic location also does uh, um, con is conducive of people uh, wanting to do business and to utilize Thailand as a location from which to export. Um, but the most important one I would say today is uh, around the China 2 uh, strategy. We have heard in the past 
uh, people talking about China plus one. Again, it was uh, shown earlier in the presentation where uh, supply chain and customer focusing now on China for China, but now are looking at other venue to support other part of the world uh, in uh, in terms of uh, their customer and customer. And to me, um, ASEAN definitely has a strong uh, position in the China Plus One, um, and the Thailand is also part of that story uh, for Interplex. And with that, I would like to conclude. And of course, if there is question and answering later, I will be more than happy to share with them. Thank you. Emeline, you're on mute. Sorry. It is now my pleasure to invite Ms. Nina Yang, Chief Executive Officer of Savannah Jurong City Global, to share her ex company's experience of operating in Thailand. Okay, good afternoon, Douglas, President of uh, Singapore Manufacturing Federation. Good afternoon, um, uh, His Excellency, uh, Dr. Suya Chandawong, and the various very distinguished speakers that are before me. Yeah, uh, my here is sharing a story more of a service company. Uh, we are not in manufacturing, but we, of course, also find Thailand, a very interesting market for us. Particularly in the last five years, we have been paying a lot of attention to Thailand. Uh, why? First of all, Thailand is, as many speakers have shared before, the second largest economy in ASEAN, with a sizable population of 69 million. And because of its economic pillars of uh, tourism and export, the country has built up a good manufacturing base with a good talent pool of skilled labor with reasonably good consumption power. So, and secondly, over the years, Thailand has established its position as a regional air hub. It's very convenient to get to, and it is a strategic center of economic activities for a population of over 230 million in the CLM TV area. Thirdly, um, we know that in the first quarter of 2020, ASEAN has taken over Europe as the largest trading partner with China. And definitely Thailand is the forerunner to benefit from the increased trade, especially as uh, many speakers before also have shared, capitalizing on its agriculture, food ma manufacturing, electronics, and uh, digital and medical related industries. And lastly, in the arena of infrastructure and urban development, uh, this is the business that we are in. With the new growth areas like Eastern Economic Corridor, it opens up opportunities for companies seeking relocation. And then for a firm like Sabana Jurong to provide master planning, building design, and real estate development services. Just a little bit on uh, Sabana Jurong. Uh, we are, of course, uh, provider of urban and infrastructure solutions. And we have about close to 70 years of history. We have a workforce of 16,000 architects, engineer planners, project manager, facility managers, and technical staff across um, 130 offices in 40 countries. Um, of course, our history date back to the Housing Development Board and the JTC Corporation of Singapore. These two agencies were responsible for housing and creating jobs for people during the nation building era of Singapore. Uh, today, Sabana Jurong, we have a group of companies under us. Uh, of interest, um, I'd like to just mention a few. Uh, the B plus H is a 65 year old architecture practice that focuses on healthcare projects and they are based out of North America. Uh, SMAT here as an 
SNEC is actually headquartered in Australia, but um, it's very strong in infrastructure, in power plant, dam, roads and railway. And we have its history dating back to the iconic snowy mountain uh, hydroelectronic um, scheme in 1949, which is where it got its name. And also, the lastly, also to mention, we have ATOS under us, which is uh, those from Singapore are familiar with. This is a safety and security solution provider. Uh, we provide um, uh, safety and, and security to private businesses as well as to um, government on infrastructure. Um, so, our sort of business in, is in mainly in these three areas. And um, in Singapore, we are responsible for a million housing in Singapore. Uh, out of Singapore, we are in a lot of G2G projects, creating township, business park, industrial parks. Yeah. And in the last area in managed services, um, we manage a lot of computer assets. Uh, we are also much into smart city technology. Uh, for instance, we have a platform that manages all the um, lifts for all the flats in the housing estate of Singapore. So how do we do our business in Thailand? Uh, you know, as you know, Thailand has a talent pool. I think you can find one of the best um, architects and landscape architects graduating out of Thailand. Uh, so in Thailand, actually, um, rather than just simply set up another branch office or a rep office or another design office, we actually work with a very strong local partner. Here, um, we are working with Amata. Amata is, um, uh, I think, it's the largest industrial developer in Thailand. Uh, it has to date developed some hundred square kilometers of industrial land and have successfully attracted more than 1,300 global companies uh, from over 30 countries to its industrial estates. Uh, it is also responsible for a vibrant community of some 300,000 employees in its two industrial estates at Chongburi and Rayon, uh, where the EEC is. Yeah. And so our JV company, um, the Great Nikong Consultancy, aims at bringing together the technical expertise um, from Sabana Jurong. Of course, our experience um, all these years in urbanization in Singapore and outside Singapore, together with Amata, who is a local, uh, strong in the local Thailand market, uh, to develop um, industrial parks that are owned by them to further develop them and bring them to the next level and uh, to create familiar environments for um, industrialists that are seeking to relocate uh, to Thailand. And also more importantly, we want to work together with Amata to use Thailand as a center, as a hub for us to expand together with them to their opportunities outside Thailand into the CLMTV area. Um, so that's why we took the approach to actually form a, a JP company with Amata. And we look forward to create more industrial estate, more business parks that will be a home to a new generation of innovation, innovative companies, advanced manufacturing as highlighted in the Thailand 4.0 and offering a good balance of work, leave, as well as social and recreational opportunities in our industrial estate and in our business park. Yeah. And then with that, I hand over back to Douglas so that uh, we can quickly answer the questions that are out there in the Q&A. Yeah. Okay, thanks Nina. Ambassador, you uh, earlier you, we spoke about the green lane, but there's one another one that talks about travel as well. Yes. Um, due to COVID, are there restrictions of travel between cities? Uh, in Thailand, as far as I, I just checked, I, there are no restrictions as such. I mean, each province will have its own um, supplementary regulations, but uh, domestic travel uh, by plane is possible. And I have not heard any restrictions um, for the time being. 
and I don't expect them to be. We are opening into the phase five of the reopening. So, so it's basically, um, uh, it's, it's for the entire country, not just for specific cities. Thank you. Thank you. So once they can get into um, Thailand, when the green lane gets somewhere down the road, then they can move around. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Uh, there's a question for EEC. Um, in the area of sustainability, what is the government policy, fiscal spending and incentives for investment in waste recovery for manufacturers and municipals? Um, thank you for your question. And uh, under the, the like the BCG, um, uh, for the improved environment, um, there are the new incentive on BCG scheme. Um, it's a uh, bio, uh, circular and green um, industry by BOI. Um, you can see the, the detail, maybe you can see the detail in the, the BOI website or uh, if you have any questions, you can, you can contact me anytime. In terms of the smart city, um, we very focus on the smart environment. That is uh, the first step for the city uh, design, architecture design. So that, that is the key things that, that EEC has. Mm-hmm. And we, we hope that in, in terms of the BCG uh, related industry, EEC will, will be develop uh, some uh, supporting system if the investor want to, to invest in EEC. Thank you very can much. I uh, sure. can I add to that? Um, actually, Thai government has uh, designated some province or some area to be um, uh, manufacturing facility for bio economy or what the so called bio hub uh, in the Konsawan province in the northern part of Thailand, for example. And by working together with the university or research institute. Um, as far as the BI incentive is concerned, we have a number of uh, activities under the sustainability. Uh, uh, you know, the sustainability is very broad, you know, uh, environmental related, infrastructure, education, so on and so forth. So many activities are promotable under BI incentives for sustainable development. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe just to follow up another one that talks about um, incentives, um, one of the participants is studying the possibility of investing in automation and robotic solutions for manufacturers. Um, any incentives for companies like this, please? Yes, we do. Actually, I have already answered the question. Uh, actually, I, I mentioned in my presentation that we support uh, grant incentive for the company setting up manufacturing facility to produce automation system, uh, automated machinery and equipment. This for the supply side measures. Uh, tax holiday will be from three to eight years. It depends on the production process. And um, apart from that, uh, we uh, encourage the the using or uh, the use of uh, automation system by encouraging the company to replace existing machinery with the automation system in order to enhance productivity and tax holiday will be granted for those who used or replaced the existing uh, machinery by by a new one a new automation system for example um actually uh, there are quite a few questions uh, around some of these areas as well uh, and which uh, I thank uh, uh, both gentlemen from uh, EEC and BOI that has been answering it in the written format. Emily, are the participants able to see those uh, answered questions inside? Yes, the participants can see the answered questions, yeah. Uh, okay, so I think some of those, uh, there are links to the website and those information. So in case there are further on uh, further questions, uh, we could always facilitate. Um, maybe please allow me to move on. Uh, there's this question for Alex. Uh, due to COVID, are there known delays for import export products? Uh, during COVID, uh, this support for companies, did foreign companies receive support from the government? 
Can you repeat, Mr. Douglas, again the question? Is there any delay? Yeah, due to the COVID, are there a delay for the import and export of uh, products? That's uh, the first part. Yes, in yeah. fact, no, we have not seen any 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 issue uh, related to import export, at least of our products, specifically to Thailand. We haven't seen it in other countries in uh, in Asia, specifically in China, but not in uh, in Thailand. Right. So the 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 supply chain is still smooth flowing. Yes, it is. I mean, uh, I would say that there was a period of the hiccup in the early stages of uh, towards September. Uh, sorry, uh, February and March, but then it got through uh, quite well. So we don't have right now a, a situation of uh, of uh, supply chain issue. The problem also we are agitated by the fact that at any given time we have a, a product on the boat, usually four to five weeks, which allows us to cushion, and the customer, if needed, uh, they can actually air freight product uh, to make up for the delay if there is any. So so far, not for us. The business has continued. Oh, that's good news. Thank you. Um, the other part of the question is, uh, during the COVID support for companies, did foreign companies receive support from the government? Well, we're not a uh, relatively foreign company, we're a joint venture, but we, uh, well, we didn't need the support uh, that I know of. We were able to continue to support product. Uh, so for my position, was not really the case. Uh, but anyway, potentially for others. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Nina, to jump over to your side, uh, what is the digital connectivity coverage for Thailand? 90% um, of the population have access. Oh, I think that one, I think they have to go back to ask the, <laughs> the <laughs> Thai officials. Yeah. Okay, anybody, any of the, the, the gentlemen could jump in? Yeah. I think we will not be familiar with the whole of Thailand. Yeah. Right. Okay, hello. Uh, yes, uh, for the uh, digital infrastructure, now uh, for Thailand, is, I think the, the, the quality is uh, very good and also in terms of the coverage. Uh, Thailand, we have the, uh, like the funding to expand the network or to the cover the whole area of so Thailand right now. And also now we are moving go to the 5G network. So it means that, that you have the, uh, like the, the base of the infrastructure support here. Yes. Oh, thank you, Kun Soa Um Okay. Um, can I jump back on some supply chains? Um, uh, there's a lot of questions on supply chains, um, like how supply chains uh, been disrupted due to COVID and trade wars. How is the USA restricting or questioning products that have a China content? Yeah, anybody? Alex, please. Um, that's a very good question and a very tricky question. So um, I just suggest that uh, today from what we know from my uh, world operations is that the US custom has the right to interpret the incoming bill of material and uh, the product you're saying any way they want. So um, you have to be very careful. So we have situations where we had to uh, move production into, into Mexico, just to give you an example where we would have to buy some raw material from China. Uh, but after we went to consultant to ask exactly uh, what could be the risk that could be labeled as uh, made in China vis-a-vis -vis, uh, made in Mexico, uh, the risk was relatively high and we have to abandon and the local source the material in Mexico. So you have to be very careful because the U.S. customer has the right to decide how to interpret what's coming in. So there is no real clear book as far as I know um, as of about a few months ago, um, of course. You can want to check. So I would suggest you get a consultant or somebody that understands uh, the recent laws and the way the U.S. is actually interpreting this. Just uh, uh, Francis, just to, I would like to add uh, on this point, on this question. Uh, actually, U.S. government would look at the uh, supposed company relocating from China to Thailand and producing that uh, the same products in Thailand. So actually, what U.S. government is looking at is whether the facility in Thailand would have the substantial production process. So without substantial production process, that might be subject to what they call anti-circumvention. So if raw material are imported from China 
and the production process is very, very shallow, for example, very just to do the final assembling, for example, so, so and value added is not uh, uh, high enough, so that, that, that uh, the risk of uh, what we call the anti circumvention and might be subject to the, the, the higher duty rate for the product imported from, from Thailand. So these are the risks. Uh, you know, many companies now try to produce the product in China for Chinese market. But for the product that exported to US, they try to relocate to elsewhere to avoid the, 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 the higher import duty imposed by US government. Uh, some product, for example, if they export from China, the import duty imposed by US government would be 80%, 0%. But if that they produce the same product in ASEAN, that might be below than, lower than 10% or 4%. So there are big gap, big difference between uh, producing in China and producing in ASEAN. Thank you very much. Um, while we are moving into the digitization um, and a lot of um, areas are, are growing, uh, this question is, uh, is asking about how is the cybersecurity in uh, critical infrastructure initiatives? Um, this particular person, their company provides solutions and how could they drive more active efforts and support in Thailand? This is a question on the cybersecurity and critical infrastructure initiatives. Okay, uh, may I share the uh, information? Uh, now, Thailand, we have the, uh, we call the cyber law. Um, and so we enforced since the last year. And so now by the law, it means that the, every the business and the organization, they have to they are, protect uh, their infrastructure for their cyber security. And also they are protect for the, uh, like the uh, citizen or even the, for the user to be careful from their cyber uh, security. And so, uh, by the by, by the law, we have seen many opportunity for their doing business of their cybersecurity here. And so, if you have the business, I think that this is a good time to go to come to Thailand. Okay. Thank you. Um, could I just follow up with you, uh, Kun Soroswong? That uh, can FBI share the feedback and concern of the Thai SMEs during this period, and how has COVID impacted on them? Oh, yes. Um, so right now <clears throat> in Thailand, so we have the uh, so many of the SME. I think about the uh, more than the three million of the SME in Thailand, and this is uh, one of the key issue of the Thai government got to the uh, focus on the how to the support the SME business. And so you have seen so many of the uh, Thai the government initiative uh, to the promote and the support for the SME. Uh, is starting from the uh, how to support from the financial the manufacturing process and even the for the go to the market and so <clears throat> now uh, Thailand SME they still need for the uh, like their partner or technology or to help them in terms of the improve of their efficiency and also they need their for their partner or to they bring them go to the global market so this is a, uh, this is the way of their Thai SME. They are we are improving their their whole operation. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, yes. Thank you. On the broader scope, um, how is the current infrastructure in Thailand able to support the proposed progress goals? Um, are there plans from the government to expand or improve the built environment in these next few years? Probably. This could be on board of investment. And um, there's a follow up question all on built environment. The current appetite of the Thailand government and consumers for environmentally friendly construction. Let, let, let me answer the question on the infrastructure first, probably. If you look at the companies uh, already invested in Thailand, and if you look at the product they are producing, 
so many high tech products many advanced te technology products can be produced in thailand so that proved that uh, our infrastructure is well equipped uh, hard drive um, the iot related uh, watching machine electrical iot electrical product iot um, electronic product for example are produced in thailand now uh, automotive very high precision part are produced in thailand now so that proves that uh, our infrastructure has been well equipped. But looking ahead, since EC has been one of the, uh, not one of, has been the largest industrial complex in Thailand, and a lot of investment uh, will be put in that area to upgrade infrastructure, particularly uh, in order to serve the new S curve or new uh, industrial sector, including the digital economy, including aviation. So you have been probably uh, heard about digital park. Uh, so many park, <laughs> high tech park, uh, will be developed in that area, and with the 5G uh, that will be in place very soon. So I think it's very good for us to leave truck, uh, actually, or digitalize. Uh, you know, to become the digital economy uh, much sooner than before. We are waiting for long to, you know, to use the 5G in, in upgrading our digital economy. Yeah, and we look forward to leapfrog together. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there are quite a few of these uh, very detailed questions, uh, and we are a bit running out of time. So, if I may, um, we could, Emily, we could, uh, help to coordinate some of these questions. I think the other questions will be uh, uh, coming in as well uh, to link up so that uh, we can uh, follow up on those areas. Yeah, yeah. we, we so, will uh, get the uh, answers to those who have asked the questions yeah, uh, so, from the so, experts and then provide to the attendees. Okay, so I would just want to uh, uh, go back to Ambassador on a very... Uh, very crucial and also a very relevant um, broad question um, and uh, after that I, I hope to get some golden wisdom from the participants today uh, on one golden advice you will give to the participants uh, um, as a roundup for today's session. Uh, so I give you some time to think while I uh, get ambassador to talk about how will the increasing hostility between China and U.S. affect Thailand? Um, thank you very much, uh, Douglas. Um, it's uh, what we call the, the million dollar question um, <laughs> uh, in that sense. But let, let me put it this way. I, th I think if, um, if you know Thailand well, and I'm sure you all do, uh, we have uh, been dealing with both the United States and China for, for many years. Uh, China, obviously, for many centuries. The United States was actually a country, the first country that the United States had a treaty in Asia. I'm not talking Southeast, I'm talking Asia, is in Thailand. Now, that was uh, more than 100, 175 years ago. So uh, we, we have been dealing with these two important countries and powers for quite some time. Um, we have, we're very close and we have good relations with both the United States and China. Uh, economically and, and in other areas, they're important partners of us. They're important. They are strategic partners of ASEAN as well. And so, uh, what we we hope is that the um, the cooperation and relationship between these the number one and number two economies of the world will continue to be smooth and will continue to find ways uh, to to resolve differences uh, because um, we we are part of the integrated. You know, uh, economy uh, here in the Asia Pacific, or as some might call uh, the Indo Pacific, uh, and so uh, it is in everyone's interest, I think, for there to be um, you know smooth relations between the number one and number two economies of the world, and, and also let me just end by saying uh, both countries are part of what we call the um, the ASEAN-centered regional architecture with the East Asia Summit, uh, that is uh, you know very 18 very important countries involved in that. Uh, so I think it's in all our interests. And, and on this point, I think um, the views of Thailand, the view of other, other ASEAN countries um, are, are going to be very similar. We value the relationship with both countries and we hope those two will continue to work together. 
Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Your Excellency. And uh, I think most of the participants will all agree that um, you have actually uh, spoken about ASEAN. And really, ASEAN doesn't want to become a proxy uh, between this, this whole, 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 whole big uh, tussle. Um, and we certainly uh, need to work even closer as uh, ASEAN sisters and brothers to come closer together to continue to put this point, especially from the private enterprise um, uh, narrative. So, Am Ambassador, um, any golden advice for our participants today? All right, uh, I assume golden is in a positive direction. And, <laughs> yep, and, and, and let, me just, let me just say one word, all right? Um, I think it's resiliency. I think this word has been touched on many times. As whether you're in the private sector or in government, whether you're an investor or a diplomat, it is always tempting to look at the short term and look at the difficulties. But as I alluded to and referred to in my remarks, uh, we are resilient economies, both Thailand and Singapore and in the region. We've gone through these uh, challenging times before. I mentioned the 97 financial crisis in Asia and, and, and there are other crises. So uh, the fundamentals are strong. The potential for opportunity is strong. And therefore, let's look um, more into the future uh, and, and build these partnerships together because uh, the Thai economy and the Thai system is very resilient as is uh, the economies of other countries in the region. And, and finally, the ASEAN potential is there. We are a, a strong single market and production base. We have strong plans for integration. We have strong plans for the connectivity uh, and in supply chains and other um, important aspects. So, so it is a, a good horse to bet on, uh, Thailand and ASEAN. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. Uh... Can we get some advice from uh, Kun Chong Di Kyu Seng? Advice about what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, actually, um, actually uh, in my view, ASEAN uh, uh, have to work together. When, when we attract investment, actually we try to look at the benefit to all ASEAN members because one company cannot produce everything in one country. The supply chain are very long, so they have to uh, invest the right product in the right countries. And the strength of ASEAN probably one of the one of them are the diversity, so it can accommodate different kind of uh, investments model. If you want to do labor intensive uh, investment, you can invest in one country. If you like to do the higher value added product, you can still invest in and other ASEAN countries. So, so this, this, I think ASEAN can complement with each other in order to, to promote investment. Thin, uh, uh, diversity is one of the strength and we can sharing uh, our strength in order to move ASEAN forward. Thank you very much. And uh, over to Kun Chomrat Sawang Samut. Yeah, thank you. I think the, from the, our experiences in terms of the, uh, dealing with the uh, <clears throat> global investor, I think the key concerns of the uh, investor they want to see what is the uh, policy support from the government um, to the uh, investor uh, and also the, uh, how the infrastructure they can the support for their the business. And the last one is about the environment and also the skill level. That is enough for their, their, their business. So I think the Thailand right now is the answer for the, uh, uh, like the Singapore, for the, our friend, uh, to have a look at the, uh, our the, uh, um, industry. Uh, you see, because the Thailand, uh, we have the many of the uh, interesting, uh, like the industry, they come to invest in Thailand. And so they are, we also they have the good of their support from the, to them and to the, how they, have, they let them to the success in their, their business. And they are over their federation, we are also their readiness to, to their support for their Singapore, uh, to their success in the business in here. So, so any question and any, anything, you, you do not hesitate to contact to us. We are ready to the support to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, we're really starting to build very good relations 
with uh, Federation of Thai Industries. Uh, we are supposed to go to a third country this year, but uh, I guess we need to do virtually first. Yeah. Yes. Um, now over to Kun uh, Ang, Ang Sotong Was Susan. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, a Singapore investor is one of the major investor in EEC areas. So I think the relationship between uh, Singapore and Thailand will be enhanced. I think the thing got the uh, hang a bit. We can't hear Kun Wasusang. Maybe we jump over. To Alex, Alex, are you able to hear us? Ah, okay, yeah. he's back. Okay, yeah. Sorry, we we we, we oh, lost sorry. you a little bit. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, I think EC is like the melting pot for the investor. There are, there are so many countries invest in EC, and I think it's one of the opportunities of the Singapore companies or the investor to invest in EC and collaborate with the other country investor here, and we we. We hope that the infrastructure uh, in EEC uh, will be uh, developed without delay because I think this time EEC will, uh, the infrastructure development in EEC is almost a PPP or public private partnership. So, uh, private sector can be drive some uh, uh, difficulty. Uh, that the government cannot do. And the government can support the, the investor uh, or the, the infrastructure uh, project is, is going in, the, in the, the good way. And the, the last but not least, I think the EEC is one of the choice of the, the Singapore investor. And uh, we hope that the government, the Thai government will, can support all the investor who is interested in investing in EEC. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Sam. I, I, I'm very excited about this whole EEC. Uh, and it's coming at a, a very interesting opportune time. And uh, indeed, I think I, we really hope the participants today will have a lot of information. And we hope to be in touch to continue this conversation. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Sam. Alex and uh, Nina, over to Nina first. Yeah. Um it's like working in other countries. It's always, while we want to leap from forward, we must also remember to always understand the local culture, respect the local culture, understand the local way of doing things. As um, we have to work with both the public sector and the private sector to push along a lot of our large-scale infrastructure or urban development projects. So, and always uh, having a good, like-minded local partners develop a network of local partners that we can work with. I think that's the, um, yeah, this is what I would, would uh, always um, advise uh, people to do, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Nina. Alex? So, thank you. I think uh, it goes without saying that um, uh, Thailand and, and ASEAN in general will have a bright future um, out of this crisis, but I would like to underline uh, the ambassador uh, golden world uh, resilience. Um, I think we're going to need a serious amount of resilience and I think we need to focus on that but if I had to share something to the audience and to everybody uh, as an organization as people uh, don't underestimate uh, the energy in your organization because uh, the challenge is going to be uh, for the next at least uh, 12 to 18 months so not as much as you know, looking at opportunity, but take care of your people and uh, and the energy in the organization because they're going to be the one requiring and needing to make the journey forward. So thank you. Thank you, Alex. So to all the fellow participants and the esteemed panelists, uh, Your Excellency, um, I am getting excited. I'm getting all this energy from you, Alex. And uh, I, I think together, although we can't meet all the participants and the panelists in, in person, but through the whole conversation, I learned a lot about how looking forward um, with the ASEAN going to be the fourth largest economy by 2030, the kind of enormous opportunities that will come along uh, while we are facing these challenges. Um, Excellency gave a very golden word called resilience. We need to come together even stronger, emerge stronger, build a resilient model together 
and to be able to write on this potential um, ASEAN growth story. And we will continue to connect um, all, 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 uh, all the, the, the participants and the panelists. Though we are not able to come together, uh, we use technology to connect and continue to build plans going forward. And I think looking at the, especially the Eastern Economic Corridor, the EEC, with a very exciting uh, growth within during this uh, next 10 years, where ASEAN is moving up to become the fourth largest economy, um, it is the right opportune time. So with that, uh, sorry that I took a bit longer and then the time got extended, but like what Alex say and the ambassador have mentioned and all the esteemed participants have mentioned, Together, we will all emerge stronger with resilience and with much more energy. So it uh, comes to the point where I would like all of you to thank, uh, to join me in thanking the esteemed, uh, the esteemed panelists and especially Your Excellency for your strong support in making uh, today's webinar happen. Thank you very much and stay healthy and well. ขอบคุณทุกคนนะครับขอบคุณมากนะครับครับครับสวัสดีครับครับคุณครับสวัสดีครับบ๊ายบายบ๊ายบาย